have been asked a ton to talk about my perfume collection and my favorite fragrances, especially if you have watched my body care videos, which I will link up here down below somewhere. Uh, I talk about fragrance and favorites videos. I post about it on the grid on Instagram. I do love it, but I'm still learning a lot about it. My collection's not huge, but some people really want to see it. So I thought that's what we do today. And that works out perfect because today's video is sponsored by... Scentbird. So for those of you who don't know, Scentbird is a monthly subscription service that sends you luxury deluxe perfume samples every single month. You can get one bottle or you can upgrade to two or three, which is something I would definitely do. <laughs> the great thing about Scentbird and why I like working with them and why I recommend them to you guys, especially as someone who in the past has kind of cautioned people against subscription boxes. This hits every mark for the perfect subscription box. First of all, you get to pick what you get, which is not always the case with subscription boxes. So it's awesome that you can go through their huge catalog of fragrances, high end designers and really obscure kind of indie brands. So they got everything from Prada, Gucci and Versace to Confessions of a Rebel and The Harmonist. So you're covered. Everything's on there and you get to pick it. The other thing I really like about it is that with subscription services, depending on the kind that you get, there's really no benefit to having something coming into your house monthly. Like for makeup, for example, I never understood that, especially when it's not makeup you can pick. But fragrance is a little different because I think you really do have to live with a fragrance for a while to decide if you, at least if you don't wanna blow money on stuff you end up not really liking. And especially if you're like me and fragrance is something that really kind of defines periods of your life. So very seasonally, I tend to change fragrances. That's why this is so perfect for me because as we're getting ready to go in fall and the cooler months, I am, of course, on the hunt for a perfect fall and winter fragrance. Enter Scentbird. Another thing about Scentbird that I like a lot is that it is a flexible subscription. So you can skip months, stack up a bunch of fragrances and just while out a couple times a year if that's what you wanna do. So today I thought I would share with you guys really quickly the glamorous, beautiful fragrances they sent me before we move on to the rest of this video. This month, I like everything they sent me. Last month, there were some hits and some misses. This month, everything, love, want to buy all of them. So the case is really cool. If you want to change the actual fragrance out, because I have a white one that I prefer to use for my fragrances now, it's beautiful, I love it. Uh, you just pop it out. You pop your fragrance out, put it back in, bing, bang, boom. So easy to use. So to get started with Scentbird, all you do is take a quick quiz online. They ask you a few questions about what type of scents you're normally drawn to, notes you really, really like, and they curate a beautiful perfume collection for you over time. The more you order, the more you get to try, the more you find out that you like. And the four that they sent me this month were all really good. They're all super girly and feminine, which is something I really enjoy with all fragrances, no matter what time of year. And one of them is actually very surprising because it has vanilla in it. And I tip, I thought I don't like vanilla in my perfumes, but because Scentbird sends you these cards that include all of the notes that are in the fragrances that you get, I found out that as much as I thought I don't like any sweetness in my perfumes, apparently I do, because Prada La Femme, which was one of my favorites this month, has vanilla in it. Who would know? Like, it's this guy right here, which has been living in my purse forever. It's been living in there for about three weeks. And because Scentbird gives you such big samples, like this thing lasts you for a hard month. It's not like that little peeny, little peewee size you get from like the department store. This thing is designed to help you really live with the fragrance and figure out if you like it or not. And I don't know if you guys just noticed how easy it was to pop this out, <laughs> but it's very easy to change your little cases, which is really cool because I wanna take Prada with me everywhere this fall. And this is a perfect fall color to travel with. So Prada La Femme in particular smells really, grown this is for grown ladies i don't know if everyone's gonna like this one as much as i do but it's got a very different uh vibe to it than anything else i have when i smell it it just makes me sit up a little straighter like there's a lady present there's a full grown woman in this room put some respect on her name like that's what that's what it does for me and i love it so this one's from sanctuary and it's called vaquita dolphin and it's really clean this is very clean this is like uh, <laughs> It smells so good. This is very fresh, very clean. It does have an element of feminine to it, but definitely more in the fresh, clean line. I would almost say this could be unisex, almost. Next is Versace Bright Crystal, which I always see on like fragrance recommendations, top 
best-selling lists on any uh, perfume website I've been on. Bright Crystal is always on there. There's a yellow one and a pink one. I've never smelled them until I got this. And holy crap, I totally understand why everybody loves this so much. Bright Crystal, that, that word bright is very, very applicable here because it is a very bright fragrance with peony, raspberry, yuzu, pomegranate, and a little bit of musk. I can definitely say this would probably be something all women would like, but definitely like my daughter would even really like this one because it's really girly and fresh and fruity, but still something really elegant for every day and really fun. This last one is called Pamela Rowland. Pamela Rowland? I don't know. This one has rose in it and rose is one of my favorite smells. If you guys have ever smelled rose argan from Lush, this kind of smells like that, but like expensive, a little more elevated. This one has peppercorn, rose, amber, tonka bean, and bergamot. So this one has, like I said, very clearly a rose fragrance, but it doesn't slap you over the face and it's not old lady-ish or granny-ish at all. It's just perfect. I like all of these. I'm trying to tell y'all. So definitely make sure that you use code WH2 to get 30% off your first month with Scentbird. And that's a big deal because they gave me a little more uh, savings to pass on to you guys this month because last month went so well. So Scentbird definitely helped me figure out some more things I would like to add to my stash permanently, which again is why I like this brand and this company so much. And I do hope to continue to test out different fragrances to figure out what to bring into my little collection here because while it's not big, I love every single one of them so much. Like that's really what it takes for me to bring a fragrance into my home. It needs to be a big, big favorite. There's no lukewarm fragrance loving around here. <laughs> but I would still love for you guys to leave all of your favorite fragrances down below if you think that there are ones that kind of vibe with my preferences and I will check them out, I promise. I, like I said, this is a, one of my favorite topics, one of my favorite things to buy. I love perfume, it's insane. So I'm gonna start with the one I have been wearing the longest. I have been wearing this one for half my life. I've been wearing it since I was 17. I'm 35 now. So pretty much my whole life. And oh, so I do not have scent bird cards for any of these. So I cannot tell you any of the notes off the top of my head unless I happen to know them or read it before. I know this one supposedly has a lot of rose in it, but I don't smell yeah, I don't smell actual roses. I just smell elegance, clayus, just the woman who wears this fragrance, every head is gonna turn as she passes by. The woman who wears this fragrance thinks Facetune takes away from her beauty. You know what I mean? Like this is another level elevated woman. She's on a different playing field. Oh my gosh, you guys have got to go smell this. It's not super easy to find anymore. It is something that I almost never see it Sephora. I see Givenchy's other very irresistible formulations. Like there's a couple of other kinds of this and some other perfumes from Givenchy at Ulta. But honestly, the only place I find this anymore are places like Dillard's. <laughs> like you have to go to an old school, like maybe a little Southern department store to find it, which is a shame because this is such a beautiful fragrance. And I really hope this never stops coming out. I will buy all Givenchy has left if they ever announce that this is going out of stock or out of production because it is, so, you guys, it, it's, it's not even funny how much I love this perfume. It's my signature scent. If I have a signature scent, it is this one. If you have never smelled this, you need to go smell it because as much as I love all the other ones I'm gonna talk to you guys about today, I truly believe thus far at this point in my life, this is the best smelling fragrance I have ever, ever, smelt in my life. Go check it out, please, and thank me later. I have no idea what order to go in. I'm gonna go with the ones that I'm almost out of because like Givenchy, these are the ones I've been using the most and I have bought multiple bottles and I need to buy new bottles. <laughs> this is Chant Chanel Eau Fresh, like the tiny little bit that's left of it. I have a lot of conflicting feelings about this perfume now and I'll tell you why. I first got into this perfume in 2019, late 2019. In fact, that's kind of part of why I don't know how I feel about it anymore because I do kind of associate this with my mother's death because when I was in Georgia and you know I was by her side for two weeks before she passed uh, I didn't have any perfume with me I had to go buy some and this is what I bought so I have replaced it several times since and I do love it but because it 
does kind of remind me of a sad time. Not to mention both my sister and my daughter wear this now. Like they used to come and steal it from me. Now they got their own bottles and it doesn't really, tell me if I'm wrong. Do you guys ever notice that if you have a perfume, like this one, for example, if anyone in my life started wearing this one obsessively, I would just take it from them and break it. Like, nope, we're not doing it. <laughs> but with this one, like it's not such a big deal. It's just that once a lot of other people around me start smelling like me, it's like not special anymore. I can't be the only one. So All Fresh from Chanel is exactly what it sounds like. Very fresh. This one is very masculine smelling for a long time. And I still do love masculine scents. Like in fact, during spring and summer, the only candles that I burn in my house are called, I call them mandals. <laughs> like they're candles that smell like a man. And that's because I just genuinely love the smell of men. When my husband gets on taking a shower and like the whole thing is steamy and smells like Axe body wash and stuff. Like, oh, I love it. So I really wanted to experiment with more kind of unisex, masculine, fresh smelling scents. And though that is something I love and I really do gravitate towards it a lot because again, this has got so many, tell me if I'm weird, okay? I know it's just perfume and I should be able to just say, I like it or I don't. But I think that's what makes perfume so interesting is all the different associations that we can have with fragrance. And now that there are so many associations with it, like I said, my mom passing, my sister and my daughter wear it now, I feel like I have to re-up it because I do like it, but I also feel like it would just sit on my shelf and never get used. So if you guys have any other fragrances in line with this that you think I would like, please let me know because as much as I love this, it might be getting retired. Okay, outside of Very Irresistible, this is the other fragrance I have been wearing for the longest and I have repurchased the most, except I always buy small bottles of this because I prefer to keep it in my purse. This one is just spring in a bottle. This is fresh, floral, romantic. Like when I think of this, I think of pink flowers, like blush toned flowers, pearls. I think of candelabras. Like that's what I think, that's, that's Dior for you, but that's definitely, it's an immediate moment is created with this perfume. There are a few types of Miss Dior. I do love the regular old Miss Dior as well. I want to pick that one up desperately. They have Miss Dior in bloom. This is blooming bouquet. I cannot vouch for in bloom, but this one, I would be shocked if anyone went to go smell this and didn't love it. This feels like the most universal perfume. Well, second most universal perfume on my list. Ugh. Ah! Let's talk about the most universal. This is Lancome Idol. I've only had this for like, I've had this for two months, not very long. Use quite a bit of it. You can tell I love it. Ugh. This is, this is, this is like, Every day, every woman. That's the only way I can describe this. And although I just went on and on about how I really don't want to wear the same fragrance as other people, and you would think that would be kind of a deterring factor for me, it doesn't do that for me because this this smells easy, breezy, light, fresh, very, very fresh, very floral, fresh and floral, man. That is my thing. You will find. This is just, you know, this is just like it's Saturday morning. My husband wants to go for brunch. We get up, I'm throwing on a white t-shirt, some jeans, a leather jacket, some white sneakers. I'm wearing my hair loose and I'm spraying this on me. Like that's the best way I can describe it. This is every day, can't think about it, irresistibly just vibrant and fresh. That is the best way I can put it. Not to mention this bottle is one of my favorite bottles I've ever seen. I showed this bottle to my best friend and like I was so excited to show it to her. I was like, look at this bottle, it's not amazing. And she just was like, yeah, it's cool, I guess. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is. I just love the design of this bottle. Can't, the only thing that sucks about it is like, you have to lay it down. It's a little annoying, but like who cares? It's beautiful. This is Way Melrose Place. If you guys have ever used Ways uh, hair products, you know how good their hair products smell. I have used some of their body care, but this is the first fragrance for them I bought. I do love this a lot, but if I'm honest, this is like gym bag. This is like body, sp body splash, honestly. As much as I love the fragrance, it's not worth like the price tag for this, which this is not crazy expensive. It's like $45, $50. I wish Way would have made body splash because it's, it's, this doesn't last crazy long. 
And while this works really well in your hair, and again, I think like as a moisture, like in a body lotion or as a, a body splash, perfume, full blown perfume, I don't know if this scent is good for that. But I do enjoy the fragrance itself. And if you did not know that Way made fragrance and you love the hair care and the hair care smell, more importantly, go check it out. Way for me is a brand that I think is going to be around for such a long time. Everything they do is so inventive. I just wish with this in particular, they would have gone more body splash route. That's all I'm saying. Next is Coco Mademoiselle. I like Chanel perfume, obviously. I think so far it's my favorite type of perfume because again, I don't know the notes of any of these things, but an all Chanel perfumes, you guys tell me what it is. There is something, it's like, it's a, it's the way it lingers. It's a note. I don't know what it is about a Chanel perfume, but it's not in any other perfume I've tried. And it's in this one too. There is something about Chanel perfumes that are so complex. Maybe that's what it is. And I have such little experience with, with perfume that I don't know really what other brands do it this well, but I love this one. And Coco Mademoiselle, first of all, I did not mean to buy this little bottle. I ordered this and uh, I can't remember if it was out of stock and that's why I had to get the smaller one or it was a full blown accident. But I did not mean, I did not want to get the smaller one with this because this is something that, this is special occasion, this is anniversary, this is Christmas at the ballet, this, this is like, if I put this on, you know something's been to happen. <laughs> I've had this for a while. I'm talking months. And that's how much I have used. And it's not because I don't love it. It's because I have full blown dedicated this to a very particular type of event in my life. And I want to strongly associate the smell of this with those moments. Almost like, because here's the thing. I can talk about perfume in like almost a poetic romantic way, but to actually inform you about perfume, I'm useless. But anyway, I love to create an experience in my life. And a lot of us pay other people to create experiences. You know, when you have like a wedding or something, one of the things people are spending all that money on is trying to create an experience for their guests. So they really want to like uh, provoke all of their senses. So when I think of a special occasion, if, if, there is this smell in the air, then I think it's just going to create a little bit more of like an excitement, a little bit more, um, it, might, it might cause me to slow down and notice the moment a little more, which is basically what I think perfume does. Weirdly, it really does create memories. It's odd. It's actually not odd. Scent is the number one thing we link with memory. So it totally makes sense that I feel this way. So while I do wish I had a much bigger bottle of this, the good news is, you know, it's not something I'm gonna wear every day anyway. So this is my special, special once in a while perfume. But I will say, I am always looking for another special occasion fragrance because I just like to feel as if there are gonna be so many special occasions. <laughs> so let me know if you have any down below. This is Replica Lazy Sunday Morning. I picked this one up in the spring. I think I got it like in March. Ooh, I liked this one. I wore this one out. It smells so good. I actually ended up picking this one up because for Christmas I got a little sampler set from Replica and there were two fragrances that I loved so much and it was Sailing Day and Lazy Sunday Morning. So this is the one I picked up so far. Shout out to Replica, side note, for just not even, don't even give us a top. I appreciate that so much because there is nothing worse than having a perfume bottle with a missing top. It is so frustrating for some reason and replica just went ahead and like did me a solid and didn't even give me a cap to deal with have to say i do appreciate it but this is my first experience with replica perfume in general and they have since added so many different fragrances to their line and i wanted to know if you guys have tried any of the new ones if so please let me know which ones i should pick up because i'm dying but this one i can honestly say i don't i don't know if i'm gonna wear it in the fall and the winter because it is spring it is because this smells like like a flower market. This smells like it's really girly again, girly, floral, fresh, but much like with the Miss Dior, they do not smell similar at all, okay, at all. But they remind me of each other because they are both spring in a bottle, no two ways about it, and they both are so like pretty. That's the word I would use. If you can call a fragrance pretty, that's what I would say. It's like sheer taffeta ruffles 
and, you know, peonies and, you know, sparkling rosé at a picnic. That's what this is. It's fresh and bright and clean and also still a little sophisticated. Like, whereas I would say this one's more girly, this one's more womanly. A little bit more womanly. I don't know why. I don't know why. It just is. <laughs> so if you're a seasonal fragrance person, this might not be your fall or winter choice, but if you don't really care about that, check this one out. It is so good. Lastly is my newest addition to my collection. And how do I count the ways? I don't even know where to start with this. I picked this up because I got a sample for it back in like maybe around Christmas time. And again, it was one of those teeny tiny samples of soap. I didn't even have it very long, but I do remember just spraying it constantly. And then when it got down to being like this much in my little sample, I would just save it in a drawer and go by and sniff it a little. It's so ridiculous. I sound like such a gutter person. But this is Gabrielle by Chanel. Again, I told you I like Chanel perfumes. Oh my gosh. When I say that Chanel perfumes have something to them that other fragrances don't, this is the one that really kind of helped, maybe it's because it was my third Chanel perfume, but this is the one that kind of helped me pinpoint that specialness within Chanel fragrances. This one smells, I don't even know. I told somebody on Instagram that this smell, something about this reminds me of my granny, okay? My granny, my little Southern granny, loved fragrance as well. She loved White Diamonds by Elizabeth Taylor and Escape. It was either Escape or Eternity from Calvin Klein. Loved them. I can smell them now. I'll just close my eyes and smell it. So when I would go to my granny's house, we would go out to dinner or something like that. And my granny would always bust out red lipstick, kitten heels, and you could smell her perfume all throughout the house before we went out to dinner. That's what this makes me think of. Something about this, this just smells like excitement to me. This smells like just glamour. Glamour, excitement, red lipstick. This is something definitely an all year fragrance for me. While again, this is my favorite perfume of all time. I do really tend to lean on it and prefer it during the winter in the fall. I think it's because when I first got this, it was in the winter. So now it always reminds me of that. This is different. This is year, like this is really close to becoming my new favorite perfume. We're talking like, these are pretty head to head. And for me to have worn this for so long and this new guy come in and like kind of creeping up the rear. Why do I say that? That is such a gross expression. <laughs> I say that all the time and I don't even know where it originates from. And it's gold. You guys, I love gold <laughs> a lot. Gold jewelry, gold accents in my home. Gold is like a power color for me or something. The whole bottle just screams gold. You guys need to go try this out. If you like anything else I have talked about, if you like floral or fresh or feminine, womanly, girly fragrances, this is your new favorite. I promise you. I promise you. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. Okay, 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 anyway. <laughs> All right guys, that is the end of this little video. I really just wanted to sit down and get this out of the way because I had been asked about it a ton to do this. Not to mention, like I said, I love perfume. I love working with Scentbird. I really wanted to just honor fragrance today, talk about all the weird little mental associations I have with it, just kind of my love letter to perfume. And honestly, you guys, again, this is a great opportunity for you guys to know very distinctly what I like and give me all your recommendations at the bottom. So this is a tiny bit self-serving. As always, thank you so much to the patrons. We recently announced the September book club. You guys, if y'all are not gonna join the book club, which you can only do on Patreon, people keep asking me. It's on Patreon, but obviously you can read the book with or without joining the book club. The book club just means we do a Zoom meeting at the end of the month and like we all talk about the book. If you don't wanna do that, which you should, but if you don't want to, you still need to read this book. It is called People Like Her. I found this book completely by accident. I never heard of it before. But when I tell you guys, if you're big social media people, like you've ever worked in social media, you consume a lot of social media, you're gonna love this book. It is part uh, black comedy, part thriller, and it has this really cynical, gone girl style twist at the end. I know every book has been saying they're gone girl for the past like 10 years. This one is or I should say it has the same feeling. The way I describe it is it's a feeling in your gut that you get at the end is kind of how I felt at the end of Gone Girl. So anyway, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Please stay tuned for lots of awesome content coming. I have a home video coming 
I have a huge empties video coming. If you guys want to hear more like product reviews, you need to watch my empties video because I have so many empties. And um, there is a how to live your life more glamorously video coming. There is uh, more relationship. There's so much stuff coming, you guys. And on September 15th, there is a huge announcement. So if you guys like me and like my channel, please be here on September 15th so we can talk about my big announcement. Other than that, I will have to catch you guys in the next one.